Hey guys, Dylan Loomis here. I wanted to dedicate this episode to all things Project Roadrunner. This is a huge deal for the future of Tesla and we all should be as well versed in this area as possible. We got some exciting information about new revelations I want to share and I'll plan to get back to a more traditional news coverage episode for tomorrow. Tesla has been invested in R&D in a pilot manufacturing plant in secrecy for some time in what's been dubbed as Project Roadrunner. These covert operations have been taking place at 47700 Cato Road and 1055 Page Avenue in Fremont, California. Now, documents have disclosed some new information about what Tesla's plans for these locations are. As mentioned, Tesla Roadrunner is essentially battery research, development, and manufacturing if you're new to the Tesla community. The proposed improvements to the Cato Road facility include the addition of a second floor within the existing building and a smaller third floor addition above the existing roof line, both within the zoning height limit and existing building footprint. Additional hazardous materials would be introduced to the site to accommodate the battery R&D and manufacturing processes. A new electrical equipment yard would be constructed between the two buildings on an existing landscaped area. The site is a 9.3 acre, fully developed property about midway between Warren Avenue and Dixon Landing Road. These new documents cover an environmental review, examining the impact the proposed building and operational changes would have on the surrounding area. Currently, Tesla employees are working in both the Cato and the Page building, but the activities have been in a state of transition. Tesla obtained demolition permits from the city and portions of the project site are now closed to access for demolition activity. Tesla has occupied the building and installed a small-scale battery manufacturing facility in the Cato building, but the last full-scale operation of these facilities was in 2017, when SolarCity conducted R&D and manufacturing of solar panels at the site. At that time, SolarCity employed up to 300 employees involved with R&D and manufacturing. For Project Roadrunner, Tesla plans to have a total of 470 employees assigned to the project site. 70 of these employees are to work a standard workweek schedule, 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Of these 70 working a traditional schedule, 45 of them will primarily focus on R&D and 25 will work primarily on manufacturing related functions. The remaining 400 employees will work in shifts, such that there are 100 employees working on manufacturing and production at any given time, all day, every day. Shifts change at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. daily. The shifts operate so that 100 employees work day shifts in the first half of the week and 100 employees work night shifts for the first half of the week with this same structure for the other 200 employees for the second half of the week. At any one time, the facility is expected to operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Manufacturing activities will take place continuously except for occasional maintenance windows. The heavier R&D focused activities will primarily occur Monday through Friday, eight to five. To accommodate the new battery manufacturing equipment, the document proposes to construct an additional floor area of 21,000 square feet on the second floor of the Cato Road building. They would also add a smaller, roughly 8,000 square foot third floor above. These improvements will increase the total floor space of the Cato building by 29,000 square feet to a total of 156,000. But these improvements will not change the footprint of the building or its exterior facades and no grading or excavation is necessary. Nearly all construction work will be conducted internally within the existing building. The project will also add rooftop mechanical equipment to support new battery manufacturing operations. Once the internal floor space is constructed, Tesla will move in the new equipment that supports its expanded battery manufacturing and R&D operations. With regard to the 1055 Page building, it's a 72,000 square foot building. No major modifications to this structure are proposed but existing available space within the southerly and northwesterly portion of the building will be used to accommodate Tesla's additional Roadrunner operations that include a portion of electrode manufacturing and the final process step in battery cell manufacturing. 
Additional rooftop equipment will also be added to this building. Tesla expects that construction of the entire project, including structural modifications to the Cato building, installation of all mechanical and manufacturing equipment, and assembly operations can be accomplished in roughly three months. Lastly, there would be a small electrical equipment yard to be constructed along the westerly portion of the Cato Road building within an area that currently serves as a courtyard. This electrical equipment yard will occupy a small 2,700 square foot site fenced in to screen pedestrian access. The equipment here will be used to modulate electrical power to the building as needed to stabilize electrical surges and dips in the PG&E power source so that the electrical equipment receives a constant, steady power supply. As part of the manufacturing and R&D that Tesla is proposing, a number of different chemicals and materials will be stored, dispensed, and used for product research and development. Some of these chemicals are flammable, highly toxic, and or corrosive in nature, which is typical for battery manufacturing. Ultimate approval of the project falls on the city of Fremont as the lead agency with the authority for approving or denying the proposed project. So now for what this actually means. While we don't know anything for sure, I wanna share a few options to give everyone some things to consider. The best estimate for production from the still relatively small pilot facility should be between three gigawatt hours and 10 gigawatt hours per year. For a company without a history of in-house battery cell production, this is a huge amount of production for its first iteration of manufacturing. It seems as though this pilot plant would serve as the blueprint on a small scale for much bigger plants to come in the future. If we stick with the low single digit gigawatt hours per year, that could be enough production for the Plaid Model S. Low volume production to start is the most realistic scenario in order to work out all of the issues that arise before expanding. If Tesla sells 80,000 Model S and X annually at 120 kilowatt hours per pack, that comes to 9.6 gigawatt hours per year that could theoretically be fulfilled by the operations at Project Roadrunner. That is if the production at the Cato Road and Page Road facilities can eclipse 10 gigawatt hours of production annually, which is very optimistic. This would be a big deal for many reasons, one of which is it would allow the most expensive batteries Tesla is sourcing from Japan, the 18650s that are currently used in the S and X. The packs are more complex and the power density of the 18650s is not as good as the 2170s. By bringing production in-house on the most expensive batteries first, Tesla can improve margins on the S and X. Another consideration would be the upcoming Semi and Roadster. To hit the impressive, promised performance metrics for these vehicles, it's assumed Tesla will need some level of next-gen battery tech to be available. The production from Tesla's Roadrunner could be a major part of this. All of this to say, which cells are going where is still a bit of a mystery, at least for now and until September 15th, when hopefully we learn a lot more at Battery Investor Day. These new cells are using technology developed by Tesla's internal team from its research lab in Canada with Jeff Don and co, and the new technologies acquired from acquisitions like Maxwell Technologies. It's rumored that Tesla has already tested a prototype cell under the secret Roadrunner project. A few months ago, it was reported that Elon was pushing to have a new battery pack with a new Tesla-made cells ready to install in a Model S or X for the Battery Investor Day back when it was scheduled to be in April. If Tesla eliminates the middleman, controls production, applies their principles of efficiency and innovation, scales quickly, increases energy density, and lowers weight and lowers costs, it feels like a lights out situation for competitors. All of these things do seem very likely. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'll catch up with you tomorrow. I hope you have a great day.